All right. Get our game back up on the board and let's uh work on making friends. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. I think there's only like one or two volumes left. We'll take a look and we'll see what we have uh before the end. Alright. Oh, there we go. Volume 18 of Endings. Many. You crash landed onto a planet called Auternia. You staggered from the wreckage of your ship. You were desperate for information, for provisions, and possibly a bit of medical attention. But most of all, you were desperate for friendship. Is what you could say if you were written by a bunch of hacks who cared about the Aristotelian ideal of narrative unity. Possibly you could make some reference to a circle being complete in a thoughtless and imbecilic manner. But we're all in this together, right? And we've all learned and grown enough to know that there's something deep and dark and absurd brewing beneath the surface. This really isn't about friendship anymore, is it? You've got enough friends. Now you need answers. You need... Oh, God damn it! This was just the intro screen. <laughs> All right. With lanky bombix? What's next on the docket? Oh, you're really feeling like going completely off the rails. So it's a good thing the first person to ping you on your palm husk is Linra. That nutty bitch is exactly the sort of destabilizing influence your life needs right now. Hello? My friend! Because that's what we are now. Friends! Cool. That's not a weird at all way to talk to someone. You're really loving this one. You're not sure what it is, but you're positive whatever crackpot caper this loopy troll is about to rope you into is going to be a real humdinger. There's a sense of finality in the air. You can taste it. Linra does you the courtesy of listening to you say all that shit without getting super put off by how much of a freak you are. Listen up. So I was thinking, since us becoming friends has worked out so well, I'm starting to think maybe it'd be a good idea to give making more friends another shot after all, I guess? That's what I was thinking. So there's this party I was invited to. You see, the fellow jades in my cloister always sneak out to go to these things. You gently suggest to Linra that she should hurry it the fuck up. Okay, so I'm nervous I'm to go, and I want a friend. Come with me, okay? Is that so crazy? And she is. I totally forgot the voice I had for her, and it's okay. No, you don't think that's crazy at all. You think that sounds fantastic, actually. You don't ask for any details, because who gives a shit? You show up on the block. We're not going to talk about how you got there or whatever, because what a waste of time. You're just there. Linner's met up with you, too. Linner mentioned there might be dancing, so you decided to really dress up for the occasion. Oh man, you went fucking nuts. You're wearing a cape and shit, but also, like, fishnets, maybe a sexy bra if that's your thing. Whatever you happen to drudge out of some dumpster or another. Honestly, you can imagine whatever you want here, but no, it's complete bullshit and you look like a total slut. Linra isn't wearing anything special because we would have had to pay someone to redraw her sprites. From the looks of it, you're heading over to somebody's hive party? You're rolling up on some kind of joint that, from past experience, you can now surmise as an alien domicile. It's pretty big, and maybe it belongs to someone on the blue end of the spectrum. Back here again, is this block just where all the jade-blooded schoolgirls love to get down and dirty? It hits you like a bucket of ice when you realize whose hive you're walking straight towards this time. This is Ardata's hive. Oh, that's just great. Your friend Ardata. Boy, do you love Ardata. Can't wait to see her again. As you approach, you can immediately tell what kind of deal they have going on here. You can hear the tunes bumping from all the way down the block, and when you get near enough to see, there are obviously a bunch of teens passed out drunk on the lawn. This is a full-blown frat house rager. Definitely doesn't seem like Linra's sort of scene. And that's because it isn't! Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm doing this. You kind of can't either. You're not even in the front door, and you can already feel the sweat pouring out of your armpits. This is gonna be so much fun! 
<laughs> you pass all the smashed lawn teens and go up to knock on the front door. You have to rap on it a few times until the telltale sound of clicking heels faintly reaches your ears. The door opens and you discover that the gracious hostess standing on the other side is none other than your best friend Ardada. Woohoo! She looks surprised to see you for only a moment before her face resolves into a wicked grin. Oh, <laughs> my, my, my. Look what the puppies dragged in. Back for more so soon, my sweet? You're not actually sure how much time has passed since you last ran into Ardada, but it doesn't feel like it can be described in any metric by soon. You've been physically savaged so many times since then, you're not sure what you're blocking out, though. You tell our daughter you're really, 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 really glad to see her, because you totally are. You tell her you weren't expecting her to be hosting a party, though. Oh, I don't know if I'd call it a party. More of a friendly kickback of sorts. Sort of exclusive, really. All the world's finest influences are here. How exactly did you hear about my little shindig? While I certainly consider you to be one of our fi my finest friends, I, I don't recall inviting you. You gesture vaguely to Linra. She doesn't seem to know how to lie and immediately cracks under the pressure. Um, one of the other jades from my cloister told me to come. His name is Lanky, but I don't think he was invited either. I get the impression we kind of always come out here. Basically we're crashing, if that's okay. Well, of course. What's an informal soiree without a few entirely uninvited interlopers? Lunar doesn't seem to know if she's being sarcastic or not, and you aren't sure if she is either, to be honest. You're like, are you fucking with us? And she's like, oh, oh, oh <laughs> or whatever. Of course not. I just have but one question for you, my dears. My daughter beckons you near. You obey her slavishly, then she leans in close to your ear and intones. You hereby certify under penalty of law that you are of age to view adult content within your state of legal repentance, have acknowledged the contents of this volume's accompanied mature content description, and are comfortable with the prospect of engaging with challenging or otherwise controversial fictional material. <laughs> you bet, Chief! Total is it. Shower power. Yeah, take care. <laughs> That's good to hear. Why don't you come right in then, my dear? I don't want to see you making any little posts online about how my party was too fucking problematic for you, though. Our daughter steps back and welcomes you again into her boat with a grandiose gesture. You're very, very excited for our daughter's party and know definitively that you will enjoy absolutely every second of what she has in store for you. <laughs> Once you've stepped in past the threshold, our daughter blows you a toxic kiss and saunters off to mingle with her enthusiastic guests. The first thing that hits you once you're in the door is the music. It's a solid wall of bass that reverberates through your body, down to your bones. The intense dance track is blasting so loud you can hardly hear yourself think. It has to be this loud to drown out all the shouting coming from the living room. As you uh, apprehensively advance it, it becomes quickly clear that Linra is completely out of her element here. She's a bundle of nerves beside you, practically glued to your hip. When you actually step into the living room, she physically attaches herself to your arm. Wow, this is more than I was expecting. You too. It's a scene of absolute chaos. The living room of the house is filled to the brim with rowdy teens, dancing rhythmlessly to the pounding music. The furniture has all been knocked over or otherwise destroyed, and you can make a pretty good guess of what's filling all the red cups you see in everyone's hands. You're about to tell Linra you wouldn't blame her if she wants to dip, but you can't get the words out before you're being flagged down by a jade-blooded boy who's just muscled his way out of the throng of partygoers with a few of his friends in tow. Linra, you made it. <laughs> Linra all but flings herself away from your body and freezes like a scared animal as the troll approaches. For all the commotion and ruckus, he's still remarkably well put together. The vigorous dance huddle doesn't seem to have disturbed his sharp makeup or his impeccably coiffed hair. There is a curious red stain down the front of his white shirt, though. He has a slutty-looking indigo-blooded girl on his right arm and an even sluttier-looking teal-blooded boy on his left, though he shakes them off and waves them away by the time he reaches you and Linra at the entryway to the room. Um, hi, Lank. Yeah, I'm here. You watch with amusement as Linra practically bursts into flame under his gaze, and it only gets worse when he sidles up to give her a startling, intimate embrace. She squeaks and tries to hug him back, but is too timid to actually touch him with her hands. You can see sweat pouring down her face. After a solid five seconds, it seems to include Lankis 
smelling Linra's hair, he pulls back to smile down at Linra with a heavy gaze. Linra's face is bright green and her eyes are bugging out of her skull from how flustered she is. But she's not not into it. <laughs> Go back, I missed it. Either way, it's awkward. Luck lucky for Linra, Link either doesn't notice or doesn't care. He settles into a comfortable, for him, posture, with his arm casually around Linra's waist, and turns to you. Oh, who's this? Um, this is my... F f friend? Yeah! Blank quirks an eyebrow. You have friends? The question seems to leave Linra speechless, so Link takes the opportunity to look back at you. His eyes rake up and down your body in a way that leaves you feeling distinctly objectified. Oh, aren't you interesting? Is there a reason you look like... that? <laughs> the question. He doesn't explain what that is specifically referring to, and given both your alien status and your state of dress, it could mean any number of things. You might take it as an insult, if not for the way he licks his lips after he says it. You can't seem to pry his eyes off here. You look at Linra for a cue, but she's too out of it to give you any sort of intelligible sign. So you just explain how you crash-landed on this alien planet an indeterminate amount of time ago, and you don't really know what you're doing, or much of anything, about anything. The fact of your appearance could be due either to this, or that you're generally a disaster of a being, irrespective of your planetary origin. How fascinating. I've never met an alien before. Well, you have. Lots of times. In fact, literally everyone and everyone, everything here is alien to you. You find your word, di your word diarrhea becoming more and more awkward and embarrassing as Lanky's eyes start burning a hole in the center of your chest. Haha, <laughs> there's no need to be so shy. I don't bite until asked. Lanky disconnects himself from Linra as he rounds on you. It's like he's lost any interest in her existence now that you're in front of him. Linra looks at you with a completely pathetic expression. That readily informs you as to what your response needs to be. You'll be damned if you aren't going to be the best wingman possible, so you definitely ignore Lank's blatant pass and turn the conversation back to Linra. You ask Lank how long he and Linra have known each other. Lank raises his eyebrows at the question. Oh, well, I suppose since she was chosen for the cloister. Some number of sweeps ago. I don't remember, really. It was 2.43 sweeps. Oh, right, then that many, I guess. Oh, huh. that's a pretty long time, actually. <laughs> yeah. Pretty impressive that you managed to go a solid 2.4 of them without saying a single word to me that wasn't circulated to me secondhand from your snide gossiping behind my back. But, wow, talk about whiplash. Linner's eyes get big like saucers. What? What are you... I don't know what you're talking about. The tone of the conversation has totally morphed from fire to ice in an instant, though neither Lanka's expression nor demeanor have changed much. He slips in the knives with all the calm composure of a casual statement. What, are you going to pretend you didn't spend the better part of the past two, sweep, two and a half sweeps complaining about how much I disgusted you? No. You do know that everyone is aware you're a nasty little bitch, right, Linra? I... um... I... I mean, take it the wrong way, I really don't mind. I'm hardly in a position to criticize. I was just curious what caused the sudden change of heart after so long decrying my vain and slatternly lifestyle. I don't... I... Have the impending ordeals finally made the little clock start to tick down in that dry, dusty nook of yours? Uh -huh. Did you figure I was the only one who might be loose enough to be willing to clean out the cobwebs before you get shipped off to base church and never have the chance again? I'm just wondering. There's a long, excruciating moment where Linra says nothing. She just stares up at Lank beside her with a completely shell-shocked expression. But before you can try to pipe up in Linra's defense, she bursts into tears. Oh no. When Linra suddenly turns and makes a mad dash to run out the door and away from the party, you're torn between running after her and giving this jerk a real piece of your mind. Your mind's made up when you look back at Lank just in time to catch him rolling his eyes. Hey, you say. It was kind of rude, don't you think? Lank snorts. 
Me? Rude. <laughs> Are you perhaps attempting to fuck with me? Clearly you haven't spent much time around this bitter pill if you think that was anything short of precisely what she deserves. You concede you maybe don't have a full enough grasp on Jade Blood cloister social dynamics to make a definitive judgment on whether or not Lenora deserved to have been so ruinously owned, but she's your friend and what good are you if you don't stick up for the people you care about? I have no idea what even got her so upset. Like I said, it's not like I really care what she says about me, but you don't get to spend as much time as she does being such a venomous little snake and act surprised when someone calls you out on it. Then why did you invite her, you ask? It seems needlessly cruel of Lanky to lead her on, on under s false pretenses, if he never intended to be her friend at all. I promise you I had no such designs. The only reason I even invited her to this thing was that my ex is being a real blood-sucking bitch, and nobody else wanted to go. I was willing to give her an honest shot, but I have no time for a vicious, slandering nag who can't even admit what she is. I thought it might be interesting to see what that crusty little shrew might be like if you could manage to wrest her bulge free of whatever excruciating knot she's got it tied into, but I guess now we'll never know. Well, this is clearly a conversation you're going to have to Switzerland out of pretty soon. What? You try to explain the historical significance of Switzerland's political neutrality on your home planet? Lanky's eyes glaze over like he's listening to you recite a sports almanac of cricket stats. That's nice. Anyway, since I seem to have scared away my date, why don't you stay a while so I can... Uh, you and I can get to know each other a little better. You seem much more interesting than she is anyway. When did Lanky get up so close to you? Your heart beats a little faster when he smiles at you like that, so poisonous and shamelessly laced with intent. Linner is definitely not the only one coming off like a snake here. I have less time to waste than most, my dear. Never seen the value in beating around the bush. Maybe it'd be socially prudent for you to go after Linra and make sure she's okay. But it's also not her volume of the friend sim, so instead of doing that, you're going to stick around and see what this spectacularly briery prima donna is all about. You had your fucking chance to bail out of this shit show, but all that's left to do now is barrel downhill as meteorically as you can manage. Fantastic. Better to dance. Why the fuck not? Lanky laughs pleasantly and reaches out to take you by the hand. The contact gives you a little thrill despite yourself. He's got nice hands, soft and warm and well taken care of, and you know it's going to be one hell of a ride wherever he's taking you. Come with me. You do. He doesn't lead you straight to the dance floor, though. He takes you around the throng of dancing partygoers, over to the kitchen of the house first. You weren't expecting to find a familiar face waiting for you there. Fancy meeting you here. Oh, I don't remember her voice either. You don't find it that surprising, honestly. You two know each other? You could say that. That's just great. Do you give discounts to friends? I sure fucking don't. You know the price, pretty boy. Pay up. <clears throat> You're a little confused. What is being purchased here, exactly? Elward gives you a funny look. You drone? What? Hush. You do as you're told and watch as Lanky and Elward carry out their shady transaction. Lank hands over a cred the credits and receives an opaque little baggie of something in return. Oh. Well, you guess you don't really need to see what's in the thing to figure out what it is at this point. Soon as the deal is done, Lanky has his hand at the small of your back and is deftly guiding you away from the scene of the crime. Is buying drugs a crime here? You aren't really well versed about the laws of Alternia, but it honestly doesn't really seem like anybody would give much of a shit about anybody doing drugs out here. You guess the clandestine transactions are just for the aesthetic. Lanky's got your back in a shady corner of the party, is pressing one of the tablets he brought into your hand with a sly grin. Okay. Yeah, he expects you to join in. You're like, uh, hold on a minute. Your experiences with alien drugs haven't really been that great, honestly, and you're not sure you're that excited for a repeat performance. Lanky's immediate response is to sneer. Oh, I see. You're one of those people. One of what people? You know. A bit boring, maybe? 
There are many words that could be used to describe you, but you don't think boring is a remote contender. You're always doing all kinds of unbelievably stupid shit, and getting into uncountable, wacky, and life-threatening situations. Is it really that fucking much to ask for there to be one time you don't rush headfirst into doing something you know is going to fuck you up and be totally awful? Blank's lips press into a thin, annoyed line. Things aren't cheap, you know. I bought them for you. Well, you didn't ask him to do that, did you? Oh, come on. Really going to be like this? Yeah, you totally are. Blank sighs dramatically. Fine. Blank casts around for the nearest victim and grabs his attention with a hand around his wrist. To your dismay, it's your sweet and innocent hot dog chum, Demon. Alas, there's nothing you can do to stop him from falling prey to Lank's wicked designs. Here, have these. Oh yeah, great! Thanks, I'd love to put drugs on my wiener. <laughs> what a tragedy. But before you know it, Lank has a hold of you and again and is dragging you off. Let's just dance. You're not too much of a square to do that, are you? Of course not. Dancing is basically the one thing you actually plan to come here and do, so that's just great. You go along with Lanky enthusiastically when he pulls you over to the writhing mass of bodies bumping and grinding on the dance floor. You get down to it. You soon discover that Lank has a very interesting dancing style. And by interesting, you mean it primarily consists of directly grinding his body against yours in an incredibly shameless fashion. But, pressed in as you are from all the sides by sweaty and inebriated bodies, there's not exactly much room for Troll Jiggis to begin with. Blank is up on you, so close, it's hard not to sweat. He has his hands at your hips, and your face fixed with sharp eyes. His heavy stare is nearly hypnotic, so blatant and undisguised in his expression. It's clear what he wants, and maybe that's more than what you're prepared to give, but when he looks at you like that, it's impossible to look away. You just go with it. Why not? It feels good, and it's not like anybody else is watching. You're surrounded by trolls, boxed in and pouring sweat, and yet it feels like you're the only two people there. Lank draws in, teeth by your ear, and this close, you can hear him easily, even over the overwhelming pound of the bass. You have the palest skin I've ever seen. Yeah. You tell him you're literally FFFFFF white, which is like blank. That makes you super racially inoffensive, FYI. You let Lank know that he can see you any way he wants, which is even more woke than making a decision. In his paper. I can see all the way inside of you. All your veins and your red blood. You smell like candy. I wonder how you'd taste. Wow, well, <laughs> you say. That's like some shit a vampire would say. Presuming I'm a rainbow drinker would be an awfully reductive and literal meaning of reading of my character. I'm just making a blatant sexual pass. Oh, okay. Good thing that's all cleared up. You take this as an opportunity to really let loose, showing off everything you got in the sexy dance acumen department. Blank is a little bewildered. What are you doing? You're like, what aren't I doing? There's a fire on the dance floor and you struck the match. You're just fucking it up here, really getting it, breaking it down, bopping, crumping, and whatever. You're smashing your ass into everyone around you and getting hot and heavy with those lusty moves. There's a point where Lank has to step back, you presume to properly behold your art in all its glory. But it soon becomes clear that it's not your prodigious dancing skills that have given him pause. You follow his startled gaze and see the cause for alarm. Bronya is here, and she looks pissed. Oh shit. Bronya is still standing in the entryway, contending with Ardata, and it looks like she hasn't caught sight of you yet. But Lank isn't wasting any time. Before you realize what's happening, Lank has you by the wrist and is hauling you away from the dance floor and off down the hallway. Lank finds safety in a bedroom. Respite block, you remind yourself, when you, when you take stock of the conspicuous absence of any bed and the presence of the revolting looking slime cocoon in which trolls allegedly spend their repose. You hold each other in a tense and nervous silence pressed against the locked door. What feels like an eternity passes, your breath held. The sound of your blood rushing through your own ears is almost enough to drown out the music. Seconds turn to minutes, and nobody comes to find you. It seems, for now, you've escaped Bronya's notice. When you turn your head to look back at Lank, you find he's been staring at you for some time. 
I haven't been able to take my eyes off you since the moment I first saw you. You're just so interesting. You freeze like a hare staring down a snake. Lank lifts his hand to brush a thumb across your cheek, fingers curling under your chin. You meet his eyes. Pupils are so black. I want to know what it'd be like to kiss you. Lank's tongue darts out to wet his painted lips. Do you want to kiss me? Oh. Well, you've already clicked on at least two mature content disclaimers to get this far. Why the hell not? Lank leans in and presses his lips against yours. His kiss is much more sweet. He kisses much more sweetly than he looks. His lips are soft and wet and taste like blackberries. This beats making out with a couple of greasy teens behind a dumpster, that's for sure. When one of his sharp fangs nicks your bottom lip, you don't even care. But when a drop of your blood beads out onto his invasive tongue, Lank draws back just an inch. You taste sharp and dangerous. Like a weapon. Is that a good thing? Not a bad thing. Lank pulls back further. His hand slips from your cheek and his fingers trail down your neck to rest on your collar, thumb brushing against the thrum of your pulse. Have you ever paled before? Lank shrugs off his jacket and starts unbuttoning his shirt. Whoa, 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 is this really gonna go there? You're like, well, no. You've never done any alien intercourse with a bucket, but it doesn't look like he even has one on him at the moment. That was apparently the wrong thing to say because Lank's face scrunches up in displeasure. Don't mock me. It's my first time. <laughs> you figure laughing would con could constitute mocking him, so you don't, but the look you give him seems to say enough. Us jades who live in the cloisters have been chosen for very special duty. We're expected to adopt a chaste and ascetic life in service to the continuation of our species. And when we undergo our ordeals and are sent off world, there's no such thing as sneaking out of the caverns. If I don't do this now, when? My life is nearly over. Will you help me feel alive? But before you can answer, Bronya's voice starts to rise shrill above the heavy music. Lank! Lank's hands shoot out at lightning speed to draw you close. Before you can so much as gasp, he presses one of his palms over your mouth to keep you quiet. Oh shit, she's close. And from the sound of it, she's getting closer. Lank! I know you're here. You need to come out and come home right now. No, I don't remember her voice either. <laughs> Lanky leans in, to cl leans in close to your ear. Shh. What will you do? <laughs> uh, keep quiet and see where this goes. You keep your mouth shut and wait for Bronya to pass. She only shouts for a little while longer before the sound of her voice fades away. There are too many blocks in this hive for her to be trying to break down the door to every one, and she didn't look too closely at this one. You've lost her. When it becomes clear Bronya's gone for good, Link lets his eyes, oh, sorry, his hand fall away from your lips. You feel him smile against your ear. Where were we? You turn in Lank's arms and look up into his blazing eyes. How can you alien pale without a bucket? I don't mind doing it without one. Sometimes it can be fun to get a little messy, don't you think? <laughs> You're like, weren't you just saying that this was your first time? Lank answers you with another kiss. This time he means business. Yeah. MC Chan. <laughs> you go all the way with this super slutty alien, and then you slump out on the ground, completely wasted. Maybe this all went kind of off the rails, but you have to admit it would have been a real shame if you got through this entire extraterrestrial adventure and never got to smash even a single alien. What would be the fucking point, honestly? This guy really did a whole number on you. You're lying spread eagled on the floor as Lank is putting his clothes back on. Man, it's probably your most accomplished friendship to date. You're not quite ready to move just yet, but since you and Lank are such good chums now, you figure now's a good time as any to ask for his chitter. <laughs> Lank seems surprised to even hear you speak. Uh, you want to add me on chitter? Yeah, you say. Isn't that what friends do? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. My palm husk is broken right now. Lank says, while typing away furiously on his palm husk. He doesn't even look down at you. 
You're like, uh, but you're using it right now? Blank rolls his eyes. I thought you would take the obvious hint. What obvious hint? Blank huffs. Look, I was trying to be nice, but you just weren't that good, babe. I don't often ring the same bell twice, but if I were going to consider it, you'd have to show me a better performance than that. Whoa. Holy shit. That's that, you guess. You low as low. Your first time banging an alien, and you couldn't even satisfy him. A little seed of worthlessness takes root inside of you and germinates so explosively that it fills you up until there's basically nothing left. You die of shame instantly. Shame to death. <laughs> oh dear. 